Hello, welcome back to Serious About Salvage and another video on the channel. So yes, it is the same day as the end of the last video, but I can't give you too much in one video. You had a hell of a lot in the last one. So we're going to continue in a new video now, where I'm hoping we're going to get the front panel on and get some curling in it. But there's a few bits to do before that. So I'm just going to spin you around and we'll talk through it quickly now before we start. So as this is now the running Fiesta ST, the plan in this video is to make sure that it drives. So if there's a bit of glare, it's, um, it's a nice warm sunny day, nice and hot. So we've got a few pipes. Uh, we have got, this one is the one that bolts to, this, to the, under, to the um, sump. It's um, turbo to uh, intercooler, or intercooler to turbo, whichever way around you wanna say it. Uh, so we need to fit that. I have a replacement for the um, intake to intercooler because there's a rip in that, so we're going to replace that. We are going to get the battery tray and everything back in place and put um, gearbox oil in it. When I figure out where it goes in, not too sure right now. Um, we have a aircon pipe one still yet to come and then that's going to be the bottom radiator hose another aircon pipe um, but there is still one more and then we have this roll of pipe now the reason why i bought this i could not find anywhere the water pipe that goes from the oil cooler back up to this fitting here so I've had to buy just a metre length of the right size and we'll have to make it ourselves. Uh, I've got some clamps for it. So that should solve that issue. We have a auxiliary belt, a new augs belt as well. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologise. And then we've got all the new replacement front panel, oil, uh, we can put the filter box back in. Um, again, we've got plenty to do in this video. I mean, all the um, header bottle needs to go back in. And this pump, which I understand, is done on a recall. Mm, leaking coolant now. Um, I understand they're fit onto the early ones on a recall, so something to do with the coolant system to help the coolant flow around. I presume it's a little motor and it's a little pump that pumps it around, I'm going to guess. So yeah, we've got plenty to do, plenty to do. So I think we'll just get you on a stand and I think I'll just start motoring through through these bits, get some of these pipes on the front all sorted out as much as we can before we put the front panel on. It'd be far easier to do it now, won't it? So that's first, let's get some stuff done. Okay, so just quickly before we start today's video, um, I want to introduce today's video sponsor. I've been kindly sent a nice Ansel BST500 battery system tester. So we're going to give it a quick test on the battery from the Jeep Renegade today. And I'm just going to tell you quickly what I think about it. So first of all, it, you know, it feels, it feels substantial enough. It's, it feels nice quality. Uh, I like the fact that you can print your res res results out. So for like more commercial use. Um, and it, there's very little buttons, it's got some instructions with it. it. Seems very straightforward to use. And for every test, it gives you a, like a reference table of the results you should be looking for. And do you know what them results mean? So under certain voltages, you, know, you should be replacing your battery and things like that. So yeah, it comes in a, in a box. I've unpacked it already. So let's have a quick look at it. So all you do is connect it up to your battery, positive to positive, negative to negative, and it'll tell you if the connection is not good. So it's saying the red one's not very good. There we go. No, I'm getting a bad connection. Right, there we go. So that's handy, it tells you if it's not connected well. So first of all, every time you turn it on, it does seem to ask you for 
the date. Now I've not set it once, so maybe once you set it, it might stay. You then get the option of 12 or 24 volts. Let me move this over, I'm getting a bit of um, glare. 12 or 24 volts, obviously we're on a car, so this car is 12 volts. And then, these are the options that you have of what it will do. It will check, well, first of all, you've got to put the capacity of your battery in. So let's just do that quickly. This battery is 760 EN. So I'm going to go EN, enter 760, you can go up and down and change. Um, and that's tested the battery in its state as it is right now, just sat here dormant. Now bear in mind, this car has been sat around for quite a bit, so um, it is telling me that the battery is a little bit low on voltage and that it needs to be charged, which is exactly true. There's 12.27 volts in it, um, it's got 586 EN left. When that value gets under a certain amount, you have to replace your battery. Obviously this had 760 to start with, so it has deteriorated. Um, but everything is in within usable condition, it just needs to have a charge, okay? So we can print that result if we want, and um, well, let's just print it. So you put your VIN in as well, just to match it to this car for the client. I've already done all this. Let's get through all that. And then you get your battery test report. Obviously, if you put the date in, it'll tell you the correct date, and you can give that to your client then to prove that they need a new battery, if they need a new battery. So we'll put that over there. So it's not the only thing this car will do. It will check startup load. So if you go on that quickly, basically what you do is you start the car, and it takes the readings of what uh, the lowest voltage is um, as you crank, and if it comes if it comes under that voltage, it'll tell you that the battery isn't strong enough to be consistently starting this vehicle. Like I said, this battery is a bit low, um, so it, it needs charging up properly. It's going to think that it's knackered, uh, but that's a good function. Then you've got max working load. So what you do is um, you need two people for this test. You have the car running someone inside holding the res between 2000 and 2500 and then you press enter and obviously it's not going to like it right now it wants a minimum voltage of 12.22 and obviously we are not running so it thinks there's an issue so um <coughs> it's another good good function and then you've got um you've got your charge system yeah that's it it's fine charge system so checking that your alternator is doing its job basically and again it's a two people job that one two person job you um have someone sat in the car holding the revs between two and a half and three thousand five hundred revs again press enter and yeah bear in mind it's not running so it's not going to be happy but it will tell you how many volts your um, alternator is putting out so all um, handy things to to do and to and to have and that's about it. So, you know, I'm going to have a bit more testing in depth of this. But in general, it seems a very easy thing to do, to use. Um, does exactly what it says on the box. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in something like this or you need uh, to test a battery, the links for this Ansel BST500 will be in the comments. Um, take a look. I do really recommend it if you need a battery tester. Most definitely recommend this. It, it does exactly what it says. Um, I haven't, haven't, haven't found any flaws with it, in all fairness. So check it out.
Right then, couldn't show it all on camera. I mean, there are all little bits of pipes and bits. I thought you'd be a bit bored, so I'd, I'd showed bits and then didn't show the bits. I've just noticed I need to put that on there as well. Um, but other than that, the only one pipe we're short of is the other um, aircon pipe to the aircon rad. Um, I'm just going to have to struggle with that with the front pa panel on because I want to put it on now. Um, because that is where... Is that... Oh, right, that's there, right. Um, yeah, that's where we're up to. That is where we're up to. So what have I done? I've done lower intake pipe, I've done aircon pipe, header bottle, battery, battery tray, air box. Um, boost control solenoid I need to do, but that's up the back. That's at home. That's it, isn't it? We are ready to put the front panel on. So we're going to find out now for definite if this this um, chassis leg has moved at all. I don't think it has. I think it's fine. And yeah, this is now when things start to progress because we're seeing big items go on, which makes it look like a lot more has been done. One thing I need to remember is obviously we, need, we ain't got any engine oil in it and we've got no gearbox oil in it. I need some gearbox oil. I'm not putting that back in. But the re refill bung's there, so we can just get to that from underneath. But yeah, I need to remember. Take that off. I need to remember to put oil in it. Must remember. So yeah, let's get the front panel down there. Get it bolted up, get it all hooked up. Oil and coolant. Where's that oil? I'm gonna move that oil right now and put it on top of the engine because I just know I'm going to forget put that there I can't possibly forget now right let's get this front panel on Right, so the front panel is on, and I do apologise. I messed up with the video in. Um, I put the I put the camera on the stand, and I thought I'd press the button to record, and I'd press the button to take a picture. So the actual installation of the front panel, 
um, it's just a picture before of of when I turn the camera on it's, so it's no good uh, but I mean like look it's on all the holes bolted up no problem I didn't have to you know push anything around um, but it shows that chassis leg is in the right place so that's a positive I did then I realized at that point that obviously I hadn't been recording so then I then turned it on so obviously you've seen me put the coolant in it um, engine oil plugging bits and pieces together um, so we're at the point now where we can run it I have just put the gearbox oil in it as well whilst the camera was charging you can do it from underneath actually you can see the bolt there I think I can, that's the fill bung on the front of the gearbox so that's done so yeah we, we can start it up now I mean this is the first time we'll be able to hear it run with the actual exhaust on it so it should sound okay and the battery leads on are the battery leads on the battery leads are on I've got a feeling I left it left something on because there's no lights come on which is great let's press the start button and see if anything lights up oh yeah we're alright Um, ish it's not happy about something the dash lights aren't coming on I think I have left something yeah yeah we've got uh, we've got no power now Let's see if we've got enough in a jump pack. Let's get it started. Um, I very much doubt it, but there's only one way to find out. I don't know what I've left on. I must have left the ignition on or something. God knows. Let's see if that gives us enough to get it running. It's just not my day. I'll drag the charge. Well, in fact, have I got I want some jump laser there. Um, it's gonna be easiest to get to it. I'll figure something out. Uh, uh, you'll have to just bear with me. I'll come back to you. Well, it's moved. So um, yeah, I think you probably guessed it's it's running and driving. I used a, uh, what did I use? I used a jump pack, got it running. Um, and yeah, everything so far. I can't, other than obviously what we already know, it's not losing coolant, it's not losing oil. Um, it drives, I've been down the farm lane, obviously only used first and second, and obviously reverse works. Um, so I'm pretty happy at the moment in terms of the car. But uh, I'm probably going to leave this here now, this video. And yeah, I'm sorry, it's not ending great. I'm just, you're probably telling my voice, I'm just down again. I've been ill again for, it'll be, this is just starting three weeks. I've been ill again. And it's, honestly, since September last year, when my daughter started nursery, 
It seems like every other week she's bringing something back. Some horrible, horrible germs. And the second I get it, it just, it just does me in for like weeks at a time. I mean, again, over two weeks. I mean, I'm, I'm fine for the first week. I can handle having a bit of cold and flu, don't get me wrong, but... When you're getting into the second week and then third week, it just gets me down. I'm just fed up with it. So I don't know. <coughs> I don't know what um, the next few weeks holds. Really, I just I'm just fed up. I just, I just can't be bothered. Simple as that. Um, I've been given a couple of di- tools, should we say, diagnostics tools. So I will be doing something. For them, I mean, tomorrow I might just be in a different mood. I might be all right tomorrow. I don't know. But anyway, I've got this battery tester I need to test out, and I've also got a scanner at home I just received today that I need to do a review for. So they'll be on at some point soon. And um, if you remember the polo, the polo's back because someone, <coughs> sorry, crashed into the back of it. And it got written off again, so they bought it back off the insurance for next to nothing. Um, They practically ended up with a next to free car over the course of buying it in the first place. Um, Well, they got paid out more, actually, than it cost them to make. So it needs some attention. It's been used and, well, it's just been used, really. Not cared for much. The damage is on the back. It's got a cracked rear bumper. But it's just damaged the, um, it's pushed the spare wheel well in a little bit, not much. I mean, the boot opens and shuts fine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I know it does actually, I've tried it. Well, it doesn't want to open, I don't know if you have to unlock it or what, I don't know. Uh, but that'll be on the channel at some point. And, um, yeah, got a 5.5 litre V8 coming as well this week. And another Passat estate, so I've got loads of things to do. It's just it's just motivation, honestly. Just I'm just fed up of being ill, really. It's simple as that. Fed up of being ill. So I'm gonna end this here and I'm gonna go home. I just I'm just not in the mood. Got loads to do. I just cannot be bothered. So yeah, sorry for the negative ending. But the car runs and drives, I suppose I'll just start it up for you. We've got all the interior to do. Still. <clears throat> oh. So it runs, it drives. Um, there will be an air, the airbag lights there now, but no engine management light. Hmm. It's it's all right. Yeah. I suspect the strut might be bent on the passenger side because it seems to be towing in quite a lot compared to the other side. Not sure how much the camera is showing there. Uh, bumper bonnet, uh, windscreen, and passenger window. So there's a fair few bits to do yet, but it um, it runs and drives, and that was. Um, I don't see unexpected, but a pleasant surprise. Um, can't even get my words out. Uh, considering the condition it turned up, shall we say. So yeah, I'm, I'm cold, I'm aching, I'm obviously not well. I'm going to go. Thanks as always for watching. Um, without you guys, I say it all the time, I wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm in a negative mood, so I'm going to shut up now before I put everyone on a downer. Take care of yourselves. <coughs> Sorry, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.